The second thing is that we, by the, there is an indirect effect by removing the predators. For instance, by removing the cod, the shrimp will thrive. The other thing is that we release um, and reduce the competition uh, between species that used to be there. For instance, by removing cod in northwest Atlantic, the elasmobranchs and rays, rays and sharks are thriving. And finally, trawling especially has effect on the habitat. It changes and even sometimes destroys the habitat in, in, on the bottom of, of, of our shelves. So, fisheries has rarely been sustainable. And this uh, is a paper published in 2006 and shows um, how fish and evertebrate stocks have collapsed. On the y-axis you see the percentage of commercial species that have collapsed since 1950. And if we follow the history, what has hap happened, almost more than 30% of the species that we use to fish on are not fishable anymore. We have, they are not extinct. They are available, they are there on a lev low level. We're not really ever, ever able to, to, to fish to extinction, but they not, it doesn't give any economic profit anymore. Um, if we look at the second, uh, the B picture here, we use, you see the blue indicates low biodiversity and red high biodiversity. Pay attention to the fact that the North Atlantic is an area with rather low biodiversity. And these low biodiversity areas are the ones that have suffered the largest change in biodiversity. So they, being low, with a low biodiversity, we are removing even more in these areas, percent-wise. Okay, let's go further and look at the North West and Northeast Atlantic. Now we learned about the trophic levels, and on the, x on the y axis we have the mean trophic levels uh, in the catch that is landed uh, by each year. Man usually starts to target fish on the top of the food chain. We have quite elementary equipment to fish. We start with Sea mammals, big predatory fish, we will do fine with a gill net or, a, or hooks. We then usually fish this way and we pro proceed to lower trophic levels that are more cost efficient. We need more expensive gear and more fuel. So the history shows that um, in general we had the habit to fish ground fish. Here on the west uh, coast, uh, the west, western Atlantic, we see that there were some pelagic fisheries also going on. That collapsed, so thereby the ground fish became the most important. Throughout the 70s, the, num the catches of ground fish declined, and in the early 90s, shrimp became the main uh, target species. Also in the East Atlantic, we see a decrease in the catch of the trophic level of the catch. And this is partly because, mainly because of the fact that the cod and the haddock that we fish on are getting smaller. We fish smaller fish than before. Fine. So this is the effect of our fishery. Let's look at the effect of the climate on climate change on, on the ecosystem. It's quite complicated. And we learned some of this already yesterday. Uh, the increased CO2 may increase, reduce the pH values and make life more difficult for our phytoplankton. Um, the increased temperature certainly together with more currents and upwelling will increase the primary production and thereby give more food to the fish. At least it looks like that. But if the clouds, the number of clouds, the amount of clouds 
is getting higher, there might not be enough light and the primary production may not be as high as we thought. The wind will increase. An increased wind can be good because a slight increase in turbulence is good for, for instance, the cod larvae. The cod larvae will see the food passing by. He doesn't have to work too much to find the food. But if this, if this, um, if this turbulence is getting very high, the fish larvae will be just thrown around and won't be able to feed. So, there are several aspects happening. New species may come in and interact with the species available already. And in general, one may say that the, that the whole, the combined effects are very unpredictable and difficult to, to and can be unexpected. And thereby, the uncertainty in our assessments, in our predictions, definitely increase. So, but marine species adapt. They adapt in several ways. This cod, the cod species as such, shows different size at age in different areas as an adaptation to temperature. The growth is, is slower in low temperature areas and higher where it's warm. The number of eggs and the size of eggs change with temperature. Spawning time and spawning grounds change. The cod is an omnivore. He may eat anything almost. So he adapts to new species, to new food. And if it gets really bad, he or she may swim away. Let's see what the temperature regime is like in the Barents Sea and how the cod may uh, react to a change here. As you see, there is quite a huge uh, a change or interannual variation in the area. There may be actually a, from 2.8 up to 4.8 uh, within just a couple of years. So there's quite a, a huge uh, variation. And the, you also see that there is a, a long time mean that's fluctuating through this. And the cod adapts. The long, pro long time prognosis given for the Barren Sea shows an inc increase like this. And there is a, quite a lot of modeling being done, looking at how the temperature may affect the distribution of fish in the future. And uh, one of the latest works is done by Xiong et al. in an EU project. And they have a scenario where the temperature will increase to 9 Celsius degrees in 30 years. So there's quite a jump. And let's see how the cod will be distributed in such a scenario. This is what it will be like after a year. And this distribution of cod is very, very similar to the one that we have today. Uh, however, the North Sea is not doing very well at the moment, and neither is the west, uh, western coast, uh, the west, west at, uh, North Atlantic. You see that Fair Islands, Iceland, and the Norwegian coast is doing fine. In 30 years, however, quite a lot, especially on the east side of the, of the Atlantic, quite a lot of the biomass is removed. So England and Norway will do bad. And Faroe has also lost quite a while, bit of the cod. The ones who are gaining are the Russians. And we will certainly have problems to get into the Russian economic zone to fish this stock here. So, but this is a model just using the cod and its temperature. It doesn't include the possibility of mackerel coming into the area and even perhaps feeding on the cod juveniles. <laughs> 